Okay, time to get with the resin. So I buy a two-part epoxy that is meant to coat photos or fine art to give it a nice high sheen. They say it's got low VOCs, but I will still always work with a window open. So this is the product I'm using these days. I buy it by the half gallon and I will then take material and put it into my little big mouth eight ounce jars. That makes with the big mouth it's easier to get the liquid out using these syringes. These syringes have uh, small like half teaspoon increments on them and it makes it easy because it's a one-to-one -one ratio hardener and resin and I have to be really accurate with my proportions because I don't want this stuff to not cure. These are also free from most pharmacies and I do mark them like this one says it's clear that's for the clear resin in other words, no color. We'll, I'll talk about that later. This one is for the colored resins that are already pre-mixed. And this is for hardener. You don't want to mix them up. Same with labeling the tops of the jars. You don't want to mix that stuff up. So, going back to these little um, dispensing systems, I'll put them in a little cup. These are Amazon they have the measurements on the side. Where are they? But I rarely use these, only if I'm mixing something like, oh, maybe 20 milliliters or more, because they aren't that uh, small of increments on here. So I use these for mixing when I'm going to be mixing my hardener and resin together. But if I am going to be doing like a group of leaves, I will pre-mix a green color, like a mid-tone green. I'll put it in this little cup from Tap Plastics. And I'll mix probably, oh God, uh, probably uh, 70 milliliters for a lot of leaves. It'll be a mid-tone green and that I will then take these little syringes and put small amounts like two and a half milliliters in each cup, again, only the resin. I haven't added any hardener at this point. So I'll mix my base resin, put some in here, and then I'll add a little bit of white to it for maybe a highlight, or maybe a little purple to get my shadows, or a few different greens so I have some variety going. But I'm only gonna be working in an area that's about, oh, maybe five square inches maximum because I've got a 45 minute window. Otherwise my stuff starts to set up and I can't get my blending. So in doing my mixing, I'll use either a, a what is this, a, a popsicle stick that I've cut the top of, off of, or I'll use um, a plastic knife, but you can go to like Michael's or Hobby Lobby and in the uh, cake decorating department they have silicone um, spatulas and you can use those those clean up really well again I'm talking about when I'm mixing my even my basic green or making my variety of greens from that base I am using powdered pigments now I used to use liquid pigments and these are nice and easy. You get really bright colors, but I cannot control how much color I'm getting in there. Even if I use a toothpick and you just dip it in there and stir it in, it's always going to be too much. So I like to use just a few, I don't know, granules of this stuff and just keep adding. So I can add a little bit of blue and a little bit of my uh, Kelly green or whichever of my reds to build up my color. I can't do that. I can't measure the liquids. If you don't care about recreating that color again in the future, use liquids. The bad thing about using the powders is they don't dissipate right away. You stir and you think you've got your right color and then you come back a few minutes later after letting them sit and 
those little particles have expanded and now they're broken up too. So your color will change. So just mix it, let it sit for, I don't know, half hour, hour, whatever. Come back, you'll see on the bottom of the container, little specks of the stuff, stir them up again. Okay. I have been, for all these years, keeping track of my color um, formulas. I have a scale that I can weigh these things out, and I write it down. Boring. But I don't know if I could go back and recreate those colors exactly, but at least I'll know which green I used or which blue I used to, to, to recreate that color as close as possible. It has come in handy. I always wear gloves. And again, you don't want to use them more than a couple of times because you don't want any residue of maybe uncured resin that wasn't mixed properly that was on your gloves to get onto your surface. Lots of paper towels. Okay, so, oh, for cleanup, I usually let my resins uh, in the beginning, I used to use my let, let my resins harden in the cup and then you just kind of pull it out because I would leave the stick in there and that would help pull the thing out. But I found that by doing that, it would kind of trash the inside of my cup. So after maybe, I don't know, 10 uses, it wouldn't pull out any longer. So now I clean up when it's still sticky and wet and you use... Let's see, isopropyl alcohol. And I buy it by the gallon. It's the 100% or 99%. And I mix it by adding water. Go through a lot of this too. My tools for application. In the beginning, I had nothing. And I would use just whatever I could find around the house. So these little things are from a, um, I think a nutcracker type set. And that's how I would get my resin in there and kind of squish it around. I would also use you know, toothpicks. But if you want larger amounts, you can kind of pour it in. You've got a little spout there. But you have really very little control here. Now, a friend of mine who is also a resin artist, you'll look him up. His name is Robert Mackey, and he does fabulous stuff. Great designer. He made these tools for me. And I gotta tell you, these things are wonderful. And I think these are just wooden dowels with a brass wire, um, no, I guess it would be a brass tube. And he made different tips. I mean, look at these things. These are just like, so great. And some of these are for bigger quantities to apply. I'm very lucky. But if you just go to, say, like I said, Hobby Lobby or even Home Depot, and just look for little things that you can use as a tool. Probably even a little screwdriver would work. Uh, again, and then you've got your table. You've got a table that you've got to have level. Really important. Because if your table is not level, that means that little cell that you're filling, you know, those little wires, that level is not going to be level. So that means that little tiny amount is going to be, you know, kind of at an angle. And when you go to stand it, you, you, you would have to put some clear in on top of that. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a pool that's partly filled. You need to put plastic on your table. And I like a thicker plastic. I think the thinnest one I use is a three-ply but the thicker you get it, like shower curtain, that's pretty damn good stuff, I gotta say. Because that way you could pull that dried resin off and you get these little blobs and stuff. You can use those blobs into your art and future projects. Okay, oh, one more thing. When you put your resin down, it's now on your board. We'll, we'll talk more about resin in the future, but you're gonna have bubbles because you're stirring the bubbles in. You want to go in and hit them with your heat gun. No, heat, torch. Heat gun is just going to blow it around and make it um, I don't know, move. 
but a torch is going to bring those bubbles to the surface and they'll pop. So you'll do this a couple of times. We'll talk about that in the future. You've got to have one. Okay, I think that'll be enough.